Hello everyone, welcome to our channel on Oracle SQL and PLSQL. Are you looking for a way to load data from your flat files into tables? Then welcome, this is the video for you. My name is Kishan Mashru and I'll be demonstrating the Oracle SQL Loader utility to load data from flat files into Oracle database tables. But before that, I would recommend you to watch our previous two videos on Oracle SQL Loader if you have not already done that. It will give you a base on the topic. Also, I would recommend you to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you never miss a notification from us. So without wasting any more time, let's hop on. What we want to do? We want to load data from files into tables. What kind of tables are this? These are any regular Oracle database table. What kinds of files are this? These files are in a specific format they are in such a way that the SQL loader can read them. So basically there are two types of files. One is positional and other is files that are delimited by a delimiter such as CSV that is comma separated value files, dot dat files, dot text files, whatever may be the extension. The actual thing lies in, in the format in which the data is. Okay, so let's start with our demo. First of all we need a table. So I'll hop on to my SQL developer where we'll create a table to store some kind of data from a file. So let's say we'll take employee ID, employee name and department ID from file and we'll load it into this EMPS table. So I'll just create this table. Okay, so as you can see the table is created and it's empty. I have given number data type to employee ID and department ID and where data type to employee name. If you are doing a blind uh, loads from files into tables, it is recommended that you use where care for every field. You never know what can come in the files, you know. Mostly files are supported by, uh, by multiple vendors and you would be loading it into your database. So it's good to have all the columns as, as where care. And now one more thing. There might be cases where you want to load data from a one database into the other. Now one way you can do is, is through database links, but say you are not allowed to make database links. In that case, you can just export the data in a CSV format using any IDE such as SQL Developer or PLSQL Developer or Toad if it's an Oracle database or a Studio Manager, SQL Studio Manager if it's a SQL Server database. Use the SQL Loader utility and load that data into Oracle database. This is also one of the ways through which you can transfer data from one database to another. So now let's look at the other part, the file. Okay. So I have created a dot dat file over here. Now the extension does not really matter. You can call it a CSV file. I'll just copy the same, give a CSV extension and we can see in this file I have three columns basically. ID, name and department ID. And I have about six records. Okay. So the first column ID for the first record has a value 100. Then you can see a comma. This comma is basically the delimiter which will tell the SQL loader that this is the end of first column's data and now starts from next character the data for the second column. That is Steve. And then you can see there's a comma again which will tell Oracle that this is the end of the second column's data and the next character starts with the third column. So that is 10 over here, department ID. So the SQL loader will read it this way. It will start from the beginning, look for the delimiter. As soon as it gets the delimiter, it will understand that the next things are for the next column. You can tell it that optionally my data is enclosed into quotes. In that case, if there is data something like this, where you have a comma in the, in the value itself, and you say my data ops are optionally uh, enclosed by quotes, it will understand that everything between the quotes is for the same column. This example is not so complex, so you don't really need a quotes, you don't really need quotes here. As we'll go into the next stages of our tutorials, I'll keep on increasing the complexity of the examples and we'll see how to tackle all these specific scenarios. Okay, so this is the basic data file. You can also call it a CSV file. I just paste the data here and save it say data.csv. 
uh, let me close it here and if we see in in the uh, in the file file structure you can see that I just created this file by default CSV is open with Excel you can just do a left click and say open with notepad plus plus you can see the file here so this is the file that I won't want to load into the EMPS table so what do I need for that I need a control file so I'll start writing a control file now as we have seen in the previous video the control file is the heart of the SQL loader utility it is the only thing that you need to write so it starts with load data it states like this is the starting of the session now now the first thing that I mentioned here is in file meaning what file I want to load I want to load this emp.dat file okay so I can just give the file name over here and if it's a dot dat format it is also not required to give the dot uh, dat extension if it is that format but let me give it and you know what it is it is good that you give the full path of the file rather than just the file name and also give the whole path inside quotes because you might have spaces in your path okay so give it inside a single quote now next thing what I want to do I can do a replace I can do a uh, append or a truncate in the first run append is always successful because the table would be empty but if say suppose the table has data from the first run and if I execute it for the second time it would fail because M I, uh, because append expects the table to be empty okay then I can use replace or truncate now replace would delete the data and put the new data inside the table uh, truncate would truncate the data from the source table and and then put this data into it but we know that truncate is much more better than delete and if you don't then watch our video on it I'll put the link in the description so I'll use truncate over here and I want to do what I want to load it into a table which table EMPS table and now if it's a uh, delimiter format the data is really in in your data file then the syntax would come like fields terminated by and what are the fields terminated by in this case it's a comma it's not really required to have a comma here you can also have something like a pipe something like this this is also very much valid but I have just kept it comma for the time being so fields delimited by comma and now we start with the column names of the table so what are the column names in the table let's have a look it's EMP ID EMP name and department ID I'll just put them here EMP ID EMP name and department ID so my first column in my file I am saying it's an ID the ID column in the file it's nothing but employee ID here name is department employee name here and department ID is department ID here okay so this is it I just created the control file now if you are if you are using any other positional format kind of a data then this would change we'll look at that example also not in this video but definitely we'll look at it in future so I'll just save this and I'll give a name to this as say load employee data dot CTL CTL is the extension for the control file so dot CTL I just saved it okay so now I have the control file I have the data file and I have the table so what are we waiting for we'll just you call the SQL loader utility and you know execute it so I'll go to the location here and give CMD okay giving CMD this way would open the CMD with a default path of this why I did I'll tell you in a in a while so now the execution of con uh, the execution of SQL loader utility is done this way SQL LDR the states you want you are doing an SQL loader and then you give user ID user ID is nothing but username password you might come across scenarios where you your organization would say that you cannot just show the password here so 
what you will do you will not use SQL loader utility no you will create another user give it only the required privileges on only the required tables and then use that user for the SQL loader utility okay so those are the first two things that you give an SQL loader command then you specify where your control file is so you give control is equal to you can directly give the control file here if the control file is in the very location from which you are calling but I'll not do that I'll just give the exact path it's very easy I'll just do a left click I'll give full path I'll select full path I'll just paste it here so simple done enter okay it says syntax error at line 5 so suppose you don't go that you don't get the you can don't get this error over here then how would you come to know you can just go to this location and you can see that the log file is generated it says syntax error I did a typo basically I'll just open <laughs> guys this is embarrassing F I E L D S fields terminated by comma I'll just execute it again so you can see that it says commit point reached logical record read six seven something like that okay so let's see the data that has got loaded so you can see that the six records got loaded over here hundred Steve ten hundred and one Billy twenty so we just loaded the data file into our database so this is the very first example that we have used the data file the table and the control file and loaded the data from file into the table wasn't it very simple of course it was now let's see the log that has generated over here now what I basically wanted to show you guys is this log file look at the sophistication of the log file it says where is the control file where is the data file where is the bad file where is the discard file it shows you I had three columns I took first I took the length was star means any variable length I use comma as the delimiter it, it shows everything it did this is the most interesting part see what it says here it read six rows successfully it loaded six rows successfully one row was not able to load due to some data error okay so it started at this time it ended at this time it has all the details it says it did, it was not able to load one file and it has written that record into dot bat file okay so that record which didn't load is the header the header I kept here so what I can do is for the time being I'll just remove the header from here and load the file again this time the table actually has some data right but as we are using a truncate all this data will get truncated and the data in the file will get loaded let me just make a small change here let me add one more record 106 say Kishan department 20 I'll save this file I'll just load it again so as you can see presently we have six records in the table I'll just load the file again and this six will be deleted and the new seven will be loaded I'm just executing the file again you can see it has done its job I can log on to my SQL developer and see that the seven records are now loaded into this the first time the bad file was created because of the header say suppose I have the header in the file and I want the data to get loaded what will I do say I have ID name and department here but I want to load it every time and remove the header you can say skip is equal to 1 in the command where you are calling just execute it and we'll see that the data got truncated and reloaded so basically you don't see a difference in the data over here but the bat file would not get generated this is the bat file of the older run okay 
not the new run this is the new log new log file we'll just see the log file you can see it successfully loaded seven records zero records were loaded due to data errors means this time it skipped that row now you can write the same thing over here also you can write options and skip is equal to one there are various other options available also we'll look at those option options in our next video what other kind of options we have and say suppose you have an extra column in your table say suppose you have insert date okay and just drop this and recreate it say suppose you have insert date but your data file just has three columns whereas your table has four columns of course the insert date is null over there so you can still run and insert date would be null for all but say suppose you want the insert date to be filled every time the records are inserted how to do that we'll look into that case in our next video so guys please do like share and subscribe to this video and please do tune in to watch our next example on sql loader thank you this is kishan signing off bye bye